truth is making a comeback. America's Top Stories with Lisa K. Donner. The city of Baltimore has been in the news ever since President Trump issued a blistering attack on the city and one of its representatives, Elijah Cummings. Liberty Nation's Andrew Moran called it another instance when the American people are watching two separate movies on the same screen again. To those who accept reality, he wrote, Baltimore is a dumpster fire of a city engulfed in the flames of corruption, destitution, and mortification. To those who can never agree with President Donald Trump on the most elementary objective truth, Baltimore's tragedies are really being distorted by people who suffer from supposed anarchic insecurities. Andrew joins us now from a safe distance, namely Toronto. Welcome to Truth is Making a Comeback, Andrew. Now, your article had a, a lot of great tongue-in-cheek references. You write, quote, We live in an age when the president tells the truth and the media try their best to prove that the opposite is true. If Trump were to say that water is wet and necessary to live, the mainstream press would have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of why this is climate change denial, racist, and grounds for impeachment. Very funny stuff. But uh, as Liberty Nation's economic correspondent, you dig into some of the ugly stats in Baltimore. So Trump wasn't really making this stuff up. Yes, uh, if I first may say that, if I were to write a book about Baltimore, and I, I would want you to narrate, that's that's perfect uh, explanation of my article. Uh, but yeah, uh, Trump is right. I hear that the rat problem is so bad in Baltimore that residents are actually re using real life mice for their computers. Uh, when I was looking through the comments, I couldn't help but wonder if it were true that President Trump thinks nobody wants to live there. Uh, if you look at the Census Bureau data, government data, it shows that people are actually leaving the city. Uh, in the 12 months ending July 1st, 2018, roughly about 7,000 people were, were leaving. That's about a little more than a percent of the population. Now, 1% may not seem like much, but this is the largest single year drop in more than tw uh, two decades. And it's also the fourth straight annual population decrease. So he is right. I mean, CNN, CNN, that CNN anchor can cry that nobody wants to live there, but the, the data show that Baltimoreans want to leave. They want to go to the suburbs or they want to go to neighboring states. Right, and the, and the problem with this is that there are fewer people to pay the tax dollars, and Maryland has got some super duper taxes. Yeah, Baltimore, they have a, a huge property tax rate of, I think it's about two and a half percent. So if you're paying, if you have a five hundred thousand dollar house, that's a that's a that's a gigantic uh, tax you're paying on this property. The issue, however, is that when people are leaving the city, uh, the, the the remaining people have to pay the or. Uh, repay the burden that's left by those people who are leaving. And the other issue is that a lot of well-connected people uh, in Baltimore, they get significant tax breaks. So I, I think I was reading the National Review how this Four Seasons development, they, got, they, they, paid, they paid about 16 times less than what the average Baltimore resident pays. And I, 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 who, could you could you that that's fair? I, I don't think so. Well, you also mentioned that Baltimore is most robbed city. What do you mean by that? Well, if you look at the uh, the FBI data from, I think the latest was 2017, on a per 100,000 po uh, population basis, the homicide rate is 55.7, robberies 958, aggravated assault is 949, uh, motor vehicle theft is 843. So the numbers are astounding. It's the most robbed city. Uh, it's considered one of the most robbed cities and one of the most dangerous cities in America. Do, do you want to live? Do you want to live in one of the most uh, dangerous cities in America? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the most reasonable people would say no, they do not. So when you look at Baltimore, it's right up there with Chicago, etc. Uh, yeah, the 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 uh, homicide rate. I think I think I said it was 55.7. So the, the, there is significant gun violence there, uh, so, and and I believe they also have strict gun laws too. So. Uh, of course, the the, the, go, the go back argument is that when you have significant gun laws, you have an increased crime because the average resident can't defend themselves. Yeah, they recently had a gun buyback, which I always find funny because the government didn't own the guns in the first place. But they did have a, you know, cash for guns program, which basically means that if you're in Baltimore and uh, somebody comes up to rob you, you, you know, the chances of a citizen who is a law-abiding citizen having a gun in Maryland is almost nil. Well, you have to go back to what uh, former President Barack Obama was talking about after the um, the 
Freddie Gray incident. He was talking about how a lot of the fa all the kids there, a lot of the uh, kids who participate in gangs, you know, they don't they don't have father figures. Larry Elder talks about this all the time. So they 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 go into crime, and and the education it, there is abysmal. So people who uh, kids who may want to have an education they can't because you know they're spending sixteen thousand dollars a student which is about four thousand dollars more than the national average and there's nothing that showed for it the literacy rate is horrible math proficiency is horrible and those who are actually fortunate to graduate from uh, high school they have to have remedial assistance for mathematics and, and english when they go to a two-year or four-year college program so you know the, the the drugs are contributing to it the crime is contributing to it and you know good for president trump for pointing this out it's just that it's the fact that you know people suffer from this trump derangement syndrome that if we, when you point out something factual and it, it shows that the democrats are, are are the cause of that problem then nobody really wants to admit it they just want to go to the default excuse of that's racism it, it's preposterous Right. So Baltimore is really kind of a third world country. Yes, that, that's exactly what uh, 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 Senator Bernie Sanders said in 2015 when he was touring there for his uh, presidential campaign. And Elijah Cummings, he said it, I think it was in 1999 or 2001, some, something around that time. He said that Baltimore is a drug infested community. So why is it racist or wrong for Bernie Sanders to say it or Elijah Cummings to say it? Well, you make a really good point there. Uh, anything else about Baltimore that you think people should know? Because your article is entitled, Let's Get Real. So, so let's get real. Yeah, uh, so uh, since I'm the economics correspondent, I'm really fascinated about economics. So if you look at the economics of Baltimore, uh, the data is, is, is interesting. You have a 6% jobless rate. One quarter of the city lives in poverty. Uh, they just had an IKEA furniture plant shut down a GM plant also shutter their doors uh, so Baltimore used to be a huge economic driver of the United States years ago it was the one of the leaders of manufacturing energy now it's just uh, it's a dumpster fire you know it's it is the, it is that that rat infested literally uh, city that, that President Trump was talking about and they, and they got 1.9 billion dollars or 1.3 billion dollars from uh, President Obama and you wonder where did that money go to? Wasn't it supposed to go to stimulus? Wasn't it supposed to improve ha uh, housing? Where did all this money go? So you know the, the city is, is is dreadful. And don't 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 uh, don't get me started on the Baltimore Orioles. You know one of the, one of the worst teams in, in, in baseball. Yeah, when I uh, moved to the Washington D.C. area some 30 years ago, we went up to the Inner Harbor when they first opened the uh, baseball park in Baltimore, Camden Yards. Anyway. The Inner Harbor was really beautiful. It was wonderful. Uh, fast forward a couple of decades, and somebody said to me, uh, don't go to the Inner Harbor. It's crime infested. Yeah, why, why, would, you, why would you want to go to somewhere that's crime infested? So that's not wrong. So good on you for uh, being safe that way. Yeah, but I, I just found it, that, that's quite a turnaround in a couple of decades, that it went from a kind of a beautiful Inner Harbor area like Trump said, to a rat-infested, high-robbery vandalization area. Well, it was around the uh, 1980s and 1990s that you started to see this shift. There was this thing called the white flight, and then there was a thing called the black flight. Uh, that, that happened around a, in a 20-year period. So all this capital was leaving the city, and all, all the money was going to the, the neighboring suburbs and the neighboring states and neighboring cities that had, that had better tax conditions, had better you know uh, education. So uh, the population decreased did play a significant part to Baltimore's demise. All right, thank you very much for joining us on Truth Is Making a Comeback. Andrew Moran, our economics correspondent on LibertyNation.com. Let's get real about Baltimore. That's Andrew's article. Got to read it, guys. Really good stuff. Andrew is a rising star. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Truth is making a comeback. Visit us at LibertyNation.com.